Good morning, Ian. You've provided a trading update this morning prior to interim results on the 15th of January. Can you tell us a little bit about what we can expect? Yes. Yeah, so, as we say in the uh, announcement, we've achieved revenue of approximately 13.8 million in the first half of the year, which is a significant increase on 8 million from the comparable period last year. And uh, profit before tax and before exceptional costs of 3.5 million. Again, you know, a significant increase on the 2 million from the same period last year. And I think what those numbers reflect are the uh, the first period of uh, results from the enlarged group. So the message really is very clear that we are you know, delivering on uh, and successfully executing against our expansion strategy. So I think what shareholders can expect now is um, full year results in line with the expectations that we've provided from the, uh, from the enlarged group. Based on broker forecasts, it appears that there's a slight second half waiting. Is that the case? Um, it is the case. There's no particular seasonality in our business, um, but historically, over previous years, there has been um, a slightly stronger second half over the first half, and that's really a reflection of our track record of continuing organic growth in the in the businesses that uh, that we operate, both the ones that we've uh, had in the group for some time now and the and the recent acquisitions. So we anticipate that in the second half of this year. And the statement says pre-tax profit before exceptionals. Can you tell us what the exceptionals are? Yeah, there will be a couple of exceptional costs in our profit and loss account. One is very much a technical item. Uh, We have to put an accounting charge into our numbers for the fair value of the long-term incentive plan. Um, And typically, um, uh, our Nomad uh, Sencos would exclude that kind of charge from market expectations. So we would do the same in our accounts. And equally, there have been some transaction costs in relation to the acquisitions that we would record as exceptional on the basis that they won't uh, recur year after year. You refer to the strong organic growth across 1PM Finance, Bradgate and Academy. Can you tell us more? Well, yes. I mean, we're delighted with the fact that the original companies in the group, both 1PM Finance, the, the first company, and the acquisitions in 2015 and 16, Academy and Bradgate, have continued to deliver organic growth. Uh, our leasing businesses together have increased the amount of deals they are originating. Uh, and obviously, originated deals relates to the revenue and the profits that then come through over a period of time, over the duration of the, the lease and loan deals, typically three years. So if we originate more than we plan, then we can see, we can look forward to uh, additional revenue and profits in the future. So, so that's uh, a very strong performance by the original companies in the group. Can you give us any indication of what organic growth is in terms of a percentage? Not, not at this point. Um, uh, we are there's, there's different growth rates at different companies across the leasing division, uh, and Bradgate in particular is performing very well. But we will have the detail of those numbers in our uh, full interim announcement in January. And how's the integration of the acquisitions generate finance, positive cash flow finance, intelligent financing, and Bell Finance? Yeah, quite a lot of companies to integrate there. Um, but but our, our model has always been to acquire companies that can essentially be left to deliver their own business plan uh, by themselves. Uh, and they're all have got particular you know, differences in their market and it's important to preserve those differences. So the integration really is around uh, back office functions and group functions such as finance, compliance, HR, IT. Uh, And I'm pleased to say that that's all going as planned. Um, The the companies that we've acquired are all performing against their um, financial plans and we anticipate them continuing to do so. And they're all contributing to our group-wide projects. So where we are harmonising employment contracts, for example, or looking at uh, making uh, computer systems talk to each other, all those groups are uh, contributing and performing in relation to the to the operational projects that we need to deliver in order to succeed with the integration that we are deploying. Are there any of the three divisions that are outperforming? No, all three of them are performing in line with what we expect uh, and consistent with our plans and indeed consistent with each other. We're not seeing any particular part of the business uh, outperforming any other and, that, and, we, and we would expect that to be the case. We wouldn't expect to see any one particular finance product for SMEs being particularly popular in relation to any other. Uh, The whole point of our strategy is to provide the financial products that most SMEs want. So plant and machinery finance, vehicle finance, invoicing, invoice finance and and loans. And and so no one division uh, performing differently to the others. And are you concerned about interest rate rises? 
Um, not particularly. Historically, we have always been able to simply pass on any changes in interest rates, whether whether that be increases or decreases. So our net interest margin effectively stays the same. We would suffer uh, an interest rate increase from uh, our uh, lenders, the people that we borrow money from. But as I say, equally, we pass that on to uh, our end user borrowers uh, in exactly the same way. So our margins would, would stay the same. And you do refer to the reduced cost of borrowings. You mention a new funding facility of an aggregate of £53.3 million. Is this all to do with the reduced cost of borrowings? Yes, it is. So one of the clear benefits of the enlarged group is that we're able to obtain economies of scale in certain areas, and one of them is clearly in the area of borrowing. Um, We're operating a treasury function, as we now call it, so that means that we're putting in place new borrowing facilities on a group basis, um, and uh, in having those uh, larger and extended Uh, group facilities were able to command a better price. So essentially, yes, the group facilities we're putting in place are are allowing us to reduce our cost of borrowings. And you mentioned the use of fintech. Can you tell us more? Yes, so we have one one of our major group uh, operational projects now is something we call Platform One. It's our internal systems project. Uh, We're not reinventing the wheel here, but what we are doing is, uh, I think I mentioned it earlier, stitching together uh, the systems that we have in the business through the various companies that we've acquired, all of which are operating on industry standard systems. But for example, we're putting in place a data warehouse so we can have one single version of the credit exposure to any one particular customer across across a range of different products. And once we have that uh, basic integration in place, we'll then be able to Uh, overlay fintech type capabilities, so artificial intelligence and pattern recognition type software that will help us with some of our decision making around our underwriting. And that's really what we mean in our context by deploying fintech capability. It's all about becoming more digitally capable in the way we do business across the whole group. So in summary, what's your outlook for 1pm going forward? Well, we're resolute in our uh, chosen strategy of being a multi-product provider of finance for SMEs. We think that's exactly the right thing to be able to do rather than concentrating purely on leasing or purely on loans. We think having multiple products is the right way forward. Uh, and we're confident that the companies that we've acquired are been, have been the right ones and are performing uh, along the lines that we originally thought they would with very strong management teams in place. So our outlook for the current year is very positive and I think we're able to deliver on the numbers that are expected of us and we'll continue with uh, our growth plans um, but in a cautious way and with prudent accounting and provisioning so that we can deliver you know high quality earnings for shareholders. Many thanks Ian for such a comprehensive update. We'll look forward to reading more on the 15th of January with the interims. Thank you.